some are excited some are more worried about the preparation so let me help you to clear this applied physics syllabus at least so we have a collection of videos which will provide the basic information required to get the good score in applied physics in less time this video we are going to see about applied physics lab exam pattern as well as some of the basic viva questions and answers so that you will be comfortable in your exam and you can score good marks so when come to the exam pattern it's a continuous internal assessment especially in case of applied physics or for every subject this is the same pattern for lab purpose and 10 marks will be for write-up on day-to-day -day experiment it is mostly related to your record and observation i hope you did then one come to next one viva was or tutorial case study application or poster presentation so any one of these carries 10 marks but most probably viva is preferable by the faculty members then third one is internal practical examination so whatever we are writing internal practical examination that is script whatever we present after completion of the experiment that will carry 10 marks so that first 30 we will do for the first mid as well as in the second mid. so if you have any doubts you can check our first part of that video which tells about the first mid exams same pattern but in the second mid along with that one we have a laboratory project that will change from lab to lab concerned faculty will decide what thing you are supposed to do for that laboratory project to work and a totally 40 marks in this 40 marks it is a must that we have to get 14 out of 40 so there is a no alternative and you have to attend for the lab exam we will write first mid as well as a second mid first mid we wrote for 30 marks and then second mid we will write for 30 marks then both will be 60 and it will be average to 30 marks along with this 30 marks wherever laboratory project is there that will be added for 10 marks that will total come up to 40 so in this 40 we have to get the 14 marks then only we will then only we will be eligible for final exams now we will see the next part that is the list of the experiments based on different batches we have some batches did pn junction diode and gnr diode in a first mid and some people did photoelectric effect for the first mid so for the experiment one and two especially photoelectric effect and pn junction diode and gnr diode that viva question answers you can check the first mid lab viva question answer video the link will be provided you can check it and uh, uh, take a note whatever required for you for the exam for this semester we will focus mainly on voltage current characteristics of light emitting diode that's nothing but led and voltage current characteristics of laser diode laser l a s e r laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation so laser diode next one is voltage current characteristics of a solar cell then final will be acceptance angle numerical aperture of optical fiber second part in that one is bending losses of that same optical fiber we have to deal with now we will see light emitting diode so here we can see a different colored light emitting diodes and the symbol will be this this is like a normal uh, our pn junction diode rays will be out out of this diode we can see the structure of a led light emitting diode basically it is a pn junction diode it will consist a p region n region that p type n type semiconductors and there will be an active region it is encapsulated in epoxy resin so whenever we supply the voltage a light will be generated and that light will emit to it so we will see what are the basic questions we can expect from this light emitting diode what is led is the first question so basically it is a semiconductor device that emits light when electric current flows through it and we have to remember that leds will work only in forward bias then so when come to the applications we have a so many applications are there for leds so these led displays we can use in tv monitors and then dimming of the lights in smartphone backlight automotive lights and in remote controls as a indicators what is the principle of led so electroluminescence is an 
electrical and optical phenomena where material emits light when electricity flows through it. The principle is nothing but electroluminescence. Then what is this electroluminescence in LED? So basically in physics, quotients will be generated from your answer only. So whenever you are answering the quotient, you have to make sure that whatever you are using the words or terms, you should be familiar. What is electroluminescence in LED? So when a light emitting diode is forward biased, so basically what is forward bias In a uh, diode, positive terminal is connected to positive terminal of the battery and negative terminal is connected to negative terminal of the diode. So in a forward bias, electrons are able to recombine with the electron holes within the device releasing energy in the form of photon so this effect is called electroluminescence what are the advantages of led over incandescent light source then leds present many advantages over incandescent light sources it consumes lower energy longer life will be there and improved robustness smaller size faster switching greater durability and reliability so so many advantages are there Sometimes they may ask what is the difference between LED and the laser. Even though both are both will give same. The next one is what technology is used in LED. So basically in nor normal diodes it will consist a semiconducting material doped with impurities to create PN junction. So basically LED, laser diode, Zener diode all are PN junction diodes but the doping percentages in P, P type and N type semiconductors may vary when they are made into diodes so basically the doping percentages changes and the related information you can find here then what determines the colors of led so color of a led energy gap of a material so we already know energy gap equal to h in that can be written as hc by lambda energy gap of a material is inversely proportional to the wavelength so when energy gap is changed then automatically wavelength will change where h is a planck's constant c is a velocity of the light so which type of band gap materials are used for LED. So basically we have a two types of band gap materials. One is direct band gap, another one is a indirect band gap. So basically here we use a direct band gap materials for LEDs making like gallium phosphide, gallium arsenide phosphide like that. So which type of biasing used for LED diode? So basically LED diode as well as a laser diode we always use a forward bias. So sometimes they may ask you draw forward bias on a paper and show us. So you have to get familiarity with the circuits not only the theory but whenever you have to present your viva you have to be familiar with the drawing of the circuits and diagrams as well that's all about the light emitting diode now we will go for laser diode so here we can see general a picture of this laser diode so as we told previously that laser diode is again nothing but a p-n junction diode a p-type n-type semiconductors then there will be intrinsic active region will be there through which laser light is emitted once we supply the power and when come to the symbol it will be a crossing will be there and light is emitting so when we are drawing for led led is simply like this we are drawing then laser will be the same but little different so in this laser diode we have so many questions on the same line starting with what do you mean by laser and how it will work what is basic properties right we will see what is a semiconductor diode laser it's a laser fabricated pn junction diode so it emit the laser when it is forward biased. Then what do you understand by laser? Laser means light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Then it is a device used to produce monochromatic means single color, collimated, unidirectional, intense and high coherent beam of light with small divergence. I hope you know these properties from theory concept of the lasers otherwise you can cross check those points are very important then what is the principle of laser the principle of laser depends on the phenomena of stimulated emission and generally we can add population inversion as well whenever matter interact with the radiation we have three types of phenomena are there one is absorption another one spontaneous emission another one is a stimulated emission so stimulated emission is mostly related to 
laser phenomena then what do you mean by coherence so laser lights are coherent so lights so if the phase difference between two beams remains constant then they are said to be coherent then what is a semi what are semiconductors semiconductors are the materials which have their conductivity between conductors and insulin then sometimes they may ask especially what is monochromacity what is unidirectional what do you mean by coherence especially these are the properties of the laser so it is always better to have the idea of the basic properties solar cell so solar cell is another pn junction diode which converts light energy into electrical energy directly it has another name that what we call photovoltaic cell and the phenomena what we call is photovoltaic effect so basically here also it will consist of p type n type material and this is a pn junction diode it will forms and it will absorb the sunlight and convert it into electricity and here solar cells we won't give any bias basically it will work in no bias mode so we will see what what are the general questions we can expect from this solar cell so first question will be what is solar cell or what is photovoltaic cell so basically it is a device that converts the energy of light directly into electricity by photovoltaic effect that's what we call solar cell how this photovoltaic cell works so basically it has to absorb the light then generate the electron hole pairs then the separation of the charge carriers will takes place and that will leads to the formation of the current so current is nothing but the flow of the electrons that has to be done here next one what is the principle of solar cell that same thing what we did previously that's a photovoltaic effect then what is photovoltaic effect? so creation of the voltage in a material upon exposure to light that's what we call simply photovoltaic effect voltage so we will see what is short circuit current that short circuit current is the current through the solar cell when the voltage across the solar cell is zero so when we make the voltage zero we will short the circuit that is nothing but the resistance in the circuit is zero that means that the circuit is short circuit then we will measure the current that's what we know short circuit current then we have open circuit voltage whenever the resistance in the circuit may go to infinity means it's a maximum or we open the circuit whatever the voltage there exists that's what we call open circuit voltage then which type of semiconducting materials are used in solar cells indirect band gap materials are used basically in uh, solar cells for example silicon all pure semiconducting materials we can which type of biasing is used in solar cell basically no biasing mode we will use in solar cell what are the applications of solar cells so solar cells are extensively used in space satellites low resistance relays for on off operations right portable exposure meters infrared detectors data processing industry so so many places we can use these solar cells in this experiment whenever we are doing mainly we will focus on one is a efficiency another one is a fill factor what is basically this fill factor and how we will calculate and it will be calculated by using IMAX, VMAX by current in load into VOC. VOC stands for open circuit voltage. ISC is short circuit current. So this IL is nothing but ISC. We can treat it as and if we write into 100 then we will get this value in percent. The next experiment is optical fibers. Here acceptance angle, numerical aperture and bending glasses. Numerical aperture and bending glasses are separately two experiments. We will combinedly do as a single experiment. So optical fibers are very important in communication systems, especially in case of the internet and other things. So here what we are going to do is we are going to see what is optical fiber and what is what do you mean by acceptance angle and numerical aperture and what principle this optical fiber will work and what are the general loss takes place here so here we can see the picture the first picture will tell about the structure of optical fiber it consists of a core and cladding basically made of same type of the material like glass or plastic and but core has the higher refractive index and cladding has the lesser refractive index so the total internal reflection phenomena can takes place and the signal will pass through then this image will tell about the axis 
acceptance angle. Acceptance angle means that's the maximum angle up to which we can incident the light signal so that it will uh, travel in the cable. Whenever we are transferring the signals, the signal has to uh, go smooth and at the receiver and it also will be pressed back in a original conditions. But if there is a problem in the, then the signal will get lost. What are the chances of the signal loss and all other things? We will see in bending losses, especially whenever we are saying bending, micro bending and macro bending. Then things are there, scattering, absorption losses, slicing loss. So we will see what are the possible questions from here. So what do you understand by fiber optics? This is a glass or plastic material made up of thin human hair, very thin it will be. So light can be propagated to it. So basically it consists of three regions. One is core cladding. This is a core cladding and then plastic buffer and outer jacket. So these mainly combinedly these two core and clad we will call optical fiber and the other things as a protecting layers they will be used. Then on what principle optical fiber will work? Total internal reflection. There is a basic conditions. One is light has to travel from denser medium to rarer. Another one is angle of incidence should be greater than the critical angle. Then what is acceptance angle and numerical aperture? Basically as we saw in the image, the maximum angle at which light entering the core is transmitted to the fiber. So without any getting disturbed, refracted, the that is the maximum angle we can send the light signal into the optical fiber. That's what we call acceptance angle. And the sign of that acceptance angle is known as a numerical aperture. How is light transmitted to the fiber? Optic? We have different types of optical fibers, single mode and multi mode. For single mode, we will use laser light, whereas for multi mode, we will use light emitting diodes as a light signals. So when the light signal is incident on the core and makes an angle of incident greater than the critical angle of the core cladding surface, multiple total internal reflection phenomena occurs. In this way, light signal can be propagated or transmitted to fiber. Then what are the various types of losses that occur in optical fibers? So previously we saw the images. There is a different types of losses are there. Absorption loss, scattering loss, dispersion loss, radiation loss, coupling loss, bending loss. Then there may be so many types of the losses. We cannot completely make it zero. But if we take care properly, we can minimize them. How do you measure the losses in optical fiber? Optic power meters uh, and the light sources will be used together to measure loss in a fiber. Then in what units do you indicate the losses? So basically losses will be indicated in decibels. What is the significance of finding the losses? Whenever we want to transmit information through optical fibers, unless we know how much a signal is getting lost in the journey, it will be difficult to set up a proper communication system. So whenever the signal is getting weak or lost, amplifiers are used in between and that amplifiers amplify the signal and make it to go. So by studying the losses, we can make proper arrangements so that our communication system works fine. Which type of light sources used in optical fibers? So basic light emitting diodes and the laser lasers are used. Especially multi-mode, we use LED. Single mode, we use laser signal. With this information, I hope you can prepare the exam very well and all the best. And we will meet in another video. Signing off, Dr. Shivanagiretti, Jai Hind.